Everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer. Should learn a computer language because it teaches you how to think. Gradually, over time, I have learned that I think differently from other people. What came as an even bigger shock though was learning just how differently everyone else thought from each other. Me, I tend to narrate nearly everything I see and think in my head. I have a constant internal monologue which mostly chats nonsense, but occasionally helps me to have a really interesting new idea. Turns out that some people don't have a monologue like that at all. They simply know what they think or what they're going to do, no inner voice necessary. Likewise, while I might memorise a room by storing a mental snapshot of it, a friend of mine instead memorises rooms by learning the positions of the items and where they are in relation to one another, like a set of instructions or an associative array. The interesting thing? He is a mathematician and a pilot, I'm a writer and a programmer. Chances are that our careers have completely reshaped our brains, the way we think and the way we experience the world. And by taking up new hobbies, you can and should do the same. I know at least two people who read maps for fun, they actually experience those places as though they were there. One of my dearest friends, who is sadly no longer with us, used to read sheet music and actually hear it as he did. That friend studied music at university and played the flute at the highest level, along with several other instruments. Whereas I consider myself pretty good at creative problem solving and ideation, he was just a thousand times sharper, he could do those same things in an instant, whereas I took much longer to get to those same conclusions. Any tracker, that's a free runner, is likewise familiar with the experience of parkour vision, where they actually see potential paths to climb or jump across as they wander through the environment. The brain is so incredibly plastic and changeable that it's possible to remove an entire hemisphere in a procedure called a hemispherectomy, and to still retain the majority of cognitive function. Our brain regions can actually take on the roles of other brain areas when necessary, altering the way we process information. The primary role of this plasticity? That is to adapt to any given environment. The brain doesn't waste space, it won't become cleverer or sharper than it needs to be, it simply adapts to the demands that we place on it. Change the environment, change the organism. The environment determines brain functions and thus brain regions that we use most often. This in turn can alter the way that those areas work and can actually cause those regions to grow and change shape. This then alters the way that we approach subsequent tasks. In one study it was found that pro athletes relied less on their visual cortices when rotating shapes mentally and more on their kinesthetic senses as compared to non-athletes. But what other activities can we and should we engage in in order to reap the most impressive cognitive benefits? I personally believe that much of the success I've had as an entrepreneur is the result of two things that I spent a large amount of time doing, programming and writing. That's because writing is very much an activity that utilises the frontal regions of the brain, higher order thinking. Writing requires you to be focused, but it also requires creativity, forwards planning, organisation and logic. It also requires you to draw on a large vocabulary and to work within the structures of grammar. It even develops a theory of mind as you consider how your words will be interpreted by a reader. In one study conducted by a German research team led by Martin Lotz, it was found that writers use different parts of their brain depending on their experience level and the type of writing they were doing. A writer will engage their visual cortex, motor regions and related brain regions even before they sit down to write, literally seeing what it is they want to describe. However, more experienced writers also utilise brain regions associated with speech, Broca's area and Wernicke's area. The hypothesis is that they are visualising a situation while simultaneously narrating it. It's been postulated that writers eventually begin to narrate much more of what they do, which may at least partly explain the constant chattering that goes on inside my head. And to extrapolate, this could also provide other benefits, offering a useful way to step back and perceive a situation in a more detached manner, as seen in exercises such as CBT. This could be one of the therapeutic benefits of keeping a journal. One fascinating study demonstrates this beautifully. Here a chimpanzee called Sheba was offered two plates of food, a large one and a small one. If Sheba pointed to the smaller tray, she would be given the larger tray as a reward. While Sheba was capable of understanding the game, she couldn't overcome her instinct to point to the larger plate. However, when the plates were replaced with numerals, she was able to successfully play the game by detaching herself from the situation. What's really interesting is that language provides an additional layer of abstraction on top of our physical reality. It provides a tool for manipulating more information than we can purely through visualisation alone. This then helps us to think ahead and to imagine possible outcomes, to have unique ideas and to solve problems in creative ways. But programming takes this one step further. Programming adds an additional layer of abstraction on top of that. When we program, we are speaking to the computer in a language that allows us to shuttle data around a series of circuits and switches in order to bring to life an app. The programming language allows us to meet the computer halfway by talking in a language that is somewhere between English and the machine code that it understands. 
It's truly amazing that the human brain is capable of doing this. Using symbols extends the power of your thoughts exponentially. Another study demonstrates this. Here, chimpanzees learn to use plastic tags to represent sameness and difference. Only once the chimpanzees understood this symbolic representation could they then grapple with higher order relationships. For instance, they could now understand that two pairs, cup cup and shoe cup, were different from one another. Philosopher Andy Clark stated, experience with external tags and labels thus enables the brain itself to solve problems whose level of complexity and abstraction would otherwise leave us baffled. I've been programming since I was six, and for the past 10 years I've been writing over 10,000 words a day, five days a week. Is it any wonder that I lie awake thinking about things like the nature of thought and new directions I could take my online business, whilst many of my friends just don't? That's not to say that any one mode of thinking is better than another. There are plenty of things they're better at than I am. But these practices have benefited me tremendously, and I genuinely think that anyone could benefit from incorporating them into their own lifestyles. And in fact, that is actually my point. In order to have a diverse and powerful brain, we should practice using our grey matter in a number of different ways. If you don't fancy programming, then another great way to think logically and abstraction is to learn math or even theoretical physics. This is easier to do than ever thanks to apps like Brilliant. Think about people you admire and the skills you could benefit from, and then consider what activities can help you to think that way. If I should want to become a little quicker-witted, then I might consider taking up music again like my sharp friend. A study published in Neuropsychologica found that experienced musicians performed significantly better on both the Stroop task and Simon task. This suggests faster and more efficient processing. It's worth noting that the way you practice these tasks also plays a big role. I shied away from sight reading and preferred rote learning. I imagine the processing benefits would come more from sight reading complex sheet music quickly. Likewise, choosing which programming language to learn could have profound effects on the way your brain is subsequently reshaped. Learning an object-oriented programming language like Java, for example, will have very different effects on your brain as compared with procedural languages such as BASIC, because the structure is different. And did you know that programming styles are so idiosyncratic and unique to the individual that it's actually possible to identify a coder by the way they program? This is called stillometry. If you want to learn programming, stay tuned as I'll be sharing some advice on how to get started over on my blog shortly. This is a channel about fitness and optimal human performance. To me, fitness should extend far beyond squats and running. If you want to be the best version of yourself, challenge your mind as well as your body. Take up new practices, hobbies and skills, and find that this can dramatically alter what you're capable of. I think that regular writing and programming are two of the best practices that can benefit anyone. But they are just two examples. The most formidable intellect would be someone with multiple skills, who could program, write, build, play beautiful music, speak multiple languages, and perform amazing feats of physicality. Doing a few memory tests in an app is a drop in the ocean, but taking up practices like this, pursuing a competitive sport or becoming a ravenous reader, those things will transform your brain in profound ways over time. I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did then please share it around, leave a like, that helps me out immensely. And you know what else builds your brain in an even more fundamental sense? That would be movement, and I'll be exploring the effects of movement on your brain very soon, so stay tuned for that one. If you enjoy this philosophical alternative approach to training your body and your mind, then be sure to check out my ebook and training program in the description down below, Super Functional Training. It explains how to train the body and mind simultaneously, and it's currently on heavy discount whilst many of us are stuck in lockdown. Subscribe if you want more like this, and thanks a ton for watching. Bye for now.